There are quite a few baseball games on the old NES, and I've already covered four of them in my Bases Loaded video. Today, we'll be covering three more, this time in the RBI Baseball franchise, which still lives on today. The original RBI Baseball is a localized version of Namco's Pro Baseball Family Stadium on the Famicom and came to the NES on two different cartridges, first on your average gray Nintendo cartridge and then later on the black Tengen cartridge. Many folks know the Atari Tengen Nintendo drama, but in short, Tengen stopped making licensed games for the NES and made unlicensed ones, indicated by this black cartridge design that makes reading the label a real pain when placed on a shelf. As far as I could find, both carts house the exact same game. Anyway, we have three games to cover today, so let's play ball! Flash Vince Coleman the steel sign. Let him just swing for the fences. It's going, going, go! RBI Baseball, the one the pros pitch. This was the first console game of its kind to be licensed by the Major League Baseball Players Association, which means it actually got to use player names. No more made-up baseball player names like Bag Steely Dan or Smacky McDonahue or Doug Outlander or whatever. You actually got to play as Nolan Ryan, Ozzy Smith, Wade Boggs, Chet Lemon, and of course, Greg Gagne. But there's a catch. The real teams weren't there. We got the players because the MLBPA is not the same as the MLB. One is the Players Association and the other are the teams, franchises, and all that stuff. You gotta have both on board if you don't want Wade Boggs just playing for the Boston... uh... dudes. And that creates another issue. While it is cool to have real players here despite the lack of real team branding, there are only eight teams in the game plus two all-star teams. You get Boston, California, Detroit, Houston, Minnesota, New York, San Francisco, and St. Louis. A nice even spread across the country, but well short of a full league. Because of that, you miss out on a lot of good players on other teams that were in the league at the time. This is helped a little by those two all-star teams. Despite their own original teams not being in the game, you'll find Jose Canseco, Cal Ripken, Mark McGuire, and Ryan Sandberg on those all-star squads, which is nice. Okay, let's get into the action a little bit. You've probably noticed that this game looks underwhelming and every player looks the exact same. Like little portly Mario's before his mustache grew in. I'm not a huge fan of the look either, and there was no attempt to make any player look unique. The only thing different about each, visually, is the hand they bat or throw with. The player's attributes do come into play here, so Nolan Ryan throws faster and Jose Canseco hits harder. The game is sluggish, though. Not Louisville sluggish either, I guess that would be a good thing, but this game is really slow, especially when fielding. It's agonizing to see a hit go 5 inches past your infielder while you were pushing the D-pad in to move him so hard you left a bruise on your thumb. Turns out this doesn't affect how fast your players move, but you knew that. Fielding is difficult. I missed a pretty easy fly ball here just like I did in Little League, so be prepared for this game to help you relive the more embarrassing moments of your childhood sports failures. You'll be frustrated by a few AI blunders here, like your unforced runners always try to advance even when that's a terrible idea for the situation. This is true all the way through the series. Apparent foul balls are ruled fair sometimes, and fielders will just run around against your will. There's a two-player mode here as you would expect. You can play a season two, and it kind of happens automatically. If you select to play one game and win, you move on to the next team. You have to beat each of the nine opponents. You can lose a game, and it's no big deal, you just have to eventually beat them all. It's a neat way to do things on the old 8-bit system that wasn't quite ready to toss you into a full season. With two players, you can engage in a best of seven, so you and a friend can go head to head for about three hours, if that's your thing. There's also a mercy rule that is enacted immediately upon a 10-run margin, no matter what inning. At the end of the game, you're presented with a newspaper with the headline of the outcome. You have to appreciate the blah 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 section down there. There's also a watch mode if you're into that sort of thing. Interestingly, you can still manipulate the action of the players. You can bat, pitch, and field, or you can put the controller down and it will just do it for you. I'm not sure what the purpose of this is, but if you want to kinda play a baseball game and kinda not, then I can't think of a better way to do that. All in all, for a first time outing, RBI Baseball has some things going for it. 
you can do just about anything you would expect here. Play a season, pinch hit, steal bases, pick off runners. It's way more sophisticated than it looks, I guess is what I'm saying, but it pales in comparison to its successors. The next game in the series really took on a different look. The players look way more realistic, for starters, and in the field they have more animated movements. The game still plays slow, that much didn't change from the original, but it's definitely an improved pace overall. For this one, they even got all the teams and the players in here, all 26 league teams from the 1989 season plus two all-star teams. Official and complete rosters and official stats, it's all here. There are a few more options here than last time. You can tailor your difficulty now with the choice of either hard or easy, and you can turn the mercy rule on or off, but it's set to 12 runs this time instead of 10. There's also an option called flash that you can turn on and off, which toggles whether the player you are controlling in the field flashes or not. This comes disabled out of the box, but it's super helpful to know who you're controlling, so I turned it on. Watch mode returns, and it's the same as the first. You can manage the teams and play when you want, like maybe you want the computer to take over the painful fielding experience while you just pitch and bat. There's also a series option, which is actually two different modes. If you play series mode with two players, you play a best of seven series against each other. If you play as one player and choose two teams from the same league, you basically play a season. After each game, you'll be given an eight-character password to jot down for next time. If you choose two teams from different leagues, then you're basically just playing a best of seven World Series. These modes could have been labeled differently to make it easier, but oh well. You can lay out for balls now too. This helps fielding feel a little less like you're wading in shin-deep pond water because it's still so slow. And I didn't notice this with the first game, but in RBI Baseball 2, the CPU can't touch a well-placed curveball. I almost found it to be too effective. Just curving it right in over the edge of the plate, batters just can't handle it. I went through a number of innings using the same pitch nine times for three straight strikeouts. I wouldn't recommend doing that if you want to have fun. I almost forgot to mention that the game has instant replay, a pretty neat addition for the time. You can't control when you see it or what it shows, but hey, at least it's there. Sadly, sports writers by this time had come up with things to say in the newspaper, so there's no more blah 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 but you still get to enjoy your headline in the paper after a victory. On the surface, there's not a ton noticeably different between RBI Baseball 2 and 3. The presentation, animation, controls, and modes are basically the same. This is as close as a yearly Madden update to a game franchise you'd get in this era. It's not completely the same though. For example, there's a ton more teams to choose from. In addition to, once again, having the league's full 26 teams and their rosters, and the two league all-star teams, like RBI Baseball 2 had, RBI Baseball 3 had some historical rosters that are complete with player names and relative abilities too. These historical teams are ones who won their division in the seasons between 1983 and 1989. So while this game gives you every team and player, for the most part, from 1990, the Division of Winners gives you the rosters from some classic 80s MLB teams like those 1989 Oakland A's with Ricky Henderson, Mark McGuire, and Jose Canseco, or those 86 Mets that won 108 games with Gary Carter and Dwight Gooden. The 84 Tigers are here too with Alan Trammell and Lou Whitaker and of course, Chet Lemon. You gotta have Chet Lemon. So all that is pretty cool, and it's worth mentioning that the manuals for both RBI Baseball 2 and 3 have a full list of rosters with stats included. This isn't entirely unique, Bases Loaded 2 did the same thing, and it came out the same year as RBI Baseball 2, but as a manual nerd, I always appreciate the extra effort they put in to include this stuff on paper. Play-wise here, there's really nothing different to remark about. Same play modes, same password system, same pitching and fielding mechanics, although from my experience the curveball wasn't the automatic strikeout pitch it was before, and I found hitting to be a little easier overall. I got an inside the park homer on my first at bat, so that's something. Once again, you can beat the game by starting a one player game and you'll automatically move on to the next team, but in this one the final team you face to win it all is a little different. Instead of a World Series against another MLB team, you close out the year against the super secret Tengen team.
Of the three RBI baseball games to come to the NES, I guess your choice for best is going to be either the second or third, and that will likely just depend on your favorite season, 1989 or 1990. The first RBI baseball has its charm, but lacks having all the MLB teams and players and feels incomplete in that way, and overall there's just a bit of a slog to play through by comparison. The series still lives on today. The classic games ran until about 1995 before a near two decade long hiatus. In 2014, it returned as RBI Baseball 14 and has had a yearly installment since as of 2021. You can find them on pretty much all modern consoles and gaming platforms. If you want more throwback baseball, RBI Baseball 4, RBI Baseball 93, 94, and 95 all landed on Sega platforms. The Super Nintendo, of course, got Super RBI Baseball. That's going to do it for RBI Baseball games on the NES. Blah, 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 blah. And thanks for watching.